Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. And if you do not like the video, please dislike the freaking video. And I mean that. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. You have reached Married at First Sight. I'm up to episode number nine. Can I get some freaking props? Because I literally did all of these videos in a matter of a couple of weeks. I looked and it's like three weeks and I've already caught up to the place where this particular episode was shown last week. Let's just get right into this review. Okay. Guys, so we are on day 15 of the marriage and we have the friend meetup where we're individually at first meeting with the friends and then towards the end or I should say the middle in the entire show is when everybody's going to meet up together. Today's Becca's birthday. Austin and Becca, they're still in these cotton candy clouds in the lovey-dovey land. Oh brother. Anyway, so Emily and Brennan after talking with Pastor Cal decide to move in together. They basically had to twist Brennan's arm behind his damn back. Brennan is excited about their upcoming house party and can't wait to show off their new apartment to everyone. Claire and Cameron find living together easy and natural. Claire believes more time together builds comfort and will build a foundation for growth. Emily is here with her friend Sophie. They're discussing the wedding. Emily describes it as amazing. She feels aligned with Brennan in important ways, noting Brennan's initial strong interest. Emily confesses that towards the end of the honeymoon, she started liking Brennan more. For some reason that I have no idea why, she does not mention the lack of attraction from Brennan towards her. That seems significant to me. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't bring that up, but Emily mentions communication issues, adding that Brennan struggles to open up on camera and needs to work on it. Sophie suggests that she be patient with him, give him space, and uh, Emily believes moving in together will improve their communication. I don't know how that could possibly help communication if he's already closed off, but alrighty then. Claire decides to bring a ham sandwich to Cameron, just kidding, but <laughs> she does bring him lunch at his job to brighten up his day, she says. Although Claire knows nothing about bikes, he is like the brain surgeon of the bike fixing industry. Cameron, I'm going to need you to stop equating yourself with a surgeon. Please shut the hell up, Mr. Expert in Carbon Fiber. They are bikes, not bodies, buddy. Cameron shows Claire around the bike shop. He's passionate about his work and Claire admires that dedication it takes to run a business. Cameron decides to give Claire a project to work on. Um, I'm so tired of these staged scenarios that Lifetime keeps putting at us. So he just so happened to have a bike ready just sitting there waiting for her to work on. You know what? I'm sick of y'all. During a birthday celebration lunch with friends, Jenny, Adrian, and Kelsey, Becca and Austin discuss their life together. Becca shares that living together is great, highlighting Austin's excellent communication skills. When asked about deep conversations, basically they're the same page on everything except religion, which they claim that they're working through. Austin mentions that Pastor Cal's insights about religion have been eye-opening. Despite the difference, Becca feels blessed because everything else with them aligns. So the topic shifts to their sex life. Austin reveals that he's taking things slow. Even Becca follows his lead, all right? When Austin steps away to go do something, bathroom, I don't know what the hell he went to go do. Adrian believes the religious aspect is opening them up. I don't know how, but maybe it will open up conversations, okay? So Jenny inquires about Becca's romantic feelings and whether she's falling in love. Becca admits that she hasn't reached the I love you stage yet. And Adrian asks about the absence of intimacy. Like Becca explains that Austin is the first adult partner who doesn't want to rush into that physical part. And initially she questioned whether he was attracted to her. But now she's ready to wait for him and she's just willing to follow his lead. On the 16th day of marriage, Brennan and Emily are moving their belongings into their new place. Emily brings in a considerable amount of stuff. Brennan teases about knowing where all her money goes because he can see it. Brennan doesn't even lift a finger to help. Alrighty then, Brennan. Brennan admits to having only about two items and she has like 18 and he's finding the process overwhelming. So despite being at a slower pace, Brennan hopes that living together will bring them closer. Uh, he expresses a commitment to avoiding divorce, which is influenced by his parents' decision to stay together unhappily, in my opinion. He keeps saying that, and I know it has to do with his parents and that toxic marriage that they've had all these years. So Emily and Brennan discuss establishing morning routines. Brennan mentions his tendency to take long showers to process things. Is this thing your penis? You know what? <laughs> what are you pro What are you processing? 
processing? I'm sorry, I'm yelling because I can see the red on my uh, monitor. What are you processing in there, um, Brennan? I mean, that's your business, but I'm just saying. Emily reassures him that everything will be fine with this living situation. Orion's friend Dom is here and he's discussing Orion's post-divorce feelings. Orion admits that after the divorce, things feel strange. He says that he's been honest with Lauren about losing romantic interest. Orion says that it would be unfair to remain half-hearted in the relationship. Dom inquires about how Orion's family feels about the situation. Orion shares that he told them what happened, what transpired, and the mom and sister were more disappointed that he didn't get a chance to achieve what he wanted from the process, but that was his own damn fault. So feel bad about what? That, that your son is unforgiving and un unloving? Unkind? Dom has the nerve to ask Orion if he's ready to date. And Orion says, no. Okay, first of all, your divorce isn't fully legal yet. Okay. And um, he acknowledges genuine feelings for Lauren at the beginning, but expresses that he can't see himself jumping into another relationship now. And he reveals the situation hurts. Hurts how? If it's hurt, it's hurt you inflicted on yourself. So Lauren shares with her friend Marcellus and Marcellette that she's going through a range of emotions after the divorce, expressing humor, anger, sadness, and discomfort. And despite this challenging situation, Lauren is trying to understand the lessons and she accepts that Orion wasn't willing to work on the relationship. Her friends emphasize the importance of effort from both sides in a marriage and highlight that forgiveness and willingness are crucial in any relationship. Lauren says that she finds the support from her friends very affirming. She says that it helps her to move on from this painful experience. Marcelette reassures Lauren that regardless of the situation, she still has a lot going on for herself. She got her money. She has the ability to continue enjoying life, travel, adventures, etc. And her friends hope that Lauren can leave the past behind and not encounter this fool again. So Emily and Brennan are shopping for their friend get together and they decided on a wig theme, which I don't understand what a wig theme is. I guess it's just wearing wigs, not really being a clown. Although Brennan cannot help being a clown because that's just what he is. Emily is optimistic about the party and she believes that it will bring them closer together. Seeing Brennan's choice of the wig theme as a positive sign that he is trying. She thinks that it will improve their week and it will help them to move on. Brennan expresses his satisfaction with the decision to move in, acknowledging that someone had to push him to take that step, which is really not a good thing, okay? He recognizes that too much time apart isn't beneficial for this experiment. Emily agrees with the decision to move in and believes it will make a significant difference in their relationship. I, on the other hand, am not as hopeful. Okay, it's so hard trying to take these people seriously with these wigs on, first of all. Austin and Becca basically had some little appetizers. I guess that was their theme. I don't know. Austin is here seeking advice from Becca's friends on how to avoid becoming Becca's ex. Okay. Lauren suggests open communication, emphasizing its importance. Really sorry. I didn't catch the name of the other lady. I'm really sorry. Okay. Becca shares with Derek about Austin's reluctance to discuss things when she wants to, heavy things, and that she just needs to give him time. Austin brings up the challenge of their differing religious beliefs, acknowledging it as a hurdle that will take time to overcome. Derek, who's known Austin for 14 years, mentioned that religion rarely came up in their friendship. Derek considers himself an atheist and finds it strange that he only recently started hearing about Austin's religious concerns. Austin expresses the belief that they will address the big issues later, indicating a willingness to work through these differences over time. Cameron and Claire are here and their theme was everything but the cup. So they had to drink out of anything that wasn't a cup. And Claire finds her friends to be a very important part of her life. Her friends are Amy and Ross, and she hopes that they like Cameron. So during this gathering, Cameron is questioned about a relationship with his father, and this is what he says. How is your relationship with your father? Distant. Does he know you're on this? No. <gasps> what would you like to tell a man who's on his deathbed? This surprising statement caught Claire off guard, leaving her confused. She doesn't understand why Cameron would bring up such personal matters in front of company rather than discussing it privately with her. She feels she feels that Cameron's lack of trust in her to share information is weird. So when Ross and Robert, Claire's friends, arrive, the conversation shifts to the dynamics of Claire and Cameron's relationship. And I've noticed that Cameron has no friends and no family there. Your godparents couldn't even be there, um, Cameron? 
not one friend. You have all this support in the United States and you don't have no friends, no family that wanted to come and meet Claire. I don't know if you're ashamed of it or what the hell, but it's weird. You're weird. So Cameron acknowledges the awkward and weird feelings between him and Claire. And then the topic of religion comes up. Cameron strongly expresses his reluctance to raise children with religious beliefs. Like he doesn't want any parts of it. Claire, on the other hand, is very religious, very faithful. She wants to raise her kids with religion. So that is going to be a huge obstacle if they can even get through that. So Claire sees Cameron's lack of closeness to family as a significant issue as she is very close to family. She also finds his abrupt and weird mention of personal family matters in a group setting very unsettling, which leads to concerns about their different foundational backgrounds. Anytime they meet up with friends, you know they have to talk about it between the both of them. They're talking about the situation and what they talked about, which we already know what they talked about because I just recapped it and I'm not going to repeat myself, but they're still on that little cotton candy cloud floating away. Becca expresses a desire for more intimacy, but she doesn't want to push Austin too hard. So Claire explains to Cameron that what he said about his dad caught her by surprise. And all Cameron has to say is okay. Bruh, you're weird. And I don't get anybody that takes Cameron's side. But he's so strange. Like, why would your response, all your response just be, okay. He's hiding something, y'all. Mark my words. And so Claire says, so? Cameron says, well, she asked, so I told her. Y'all don't, and so for, for those of you that are on Cameron's side here, and y'all think that Claire's so cold, so it's such a frigid air or whatever. Y'all don't see what Cameron did there as very strange. I mean, y'all think that's normal to do that in front of company? I mean, all I've been seeing is Claire trying to get to know him and him shutting her down. So they do a flashback of the conversation at the wedding when Claire asked him, do your parents know about this? And he just, you know, glazed over that, as I said, when I did that recap and he did not answer the question. What he said was, oh, I'm going to just do a redo wedding. That is not answering the question. And when people are avoidant, when people ask you clear questions, they're hiding something. He's hiding something and I can't wait to find out what the hell it is. Okay, we already know he obviously didn't tell any of his family or friends that he got married. Cameron expresses concern about the lack of real expressions of feelings from Claire. And Cameron's perception is that there's zero chance of intimacy. Cameron says he feels like he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. And he says he has feelings for Claire, but struggles with the difficulty of building a relationship under these circumstances. Now, Claire offers to support him. Cameron insists that he doesn't need anything. So it leads Claire to feel like he doesn't want to invest any mental energy into this right now. And so she leaves it at that. Brennan informs Emily that her friends basically uh, jumped on his back like a freaking WWE wrestler. All right like a tag team they basically tag teamed him in the ring emily pretty much had his back and apologized on behalf of her friends and brendan was grateful that emily had his back and that is the end of this review all right guys um i really hope that you enjoyed my recap and if you did please put a like on this video anyway guys thank you so much for watching my channel make sure you like comment and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye